with all this around us, because it just seems to be, and that's what just playing cautious and reading what happens or what you got to do uh, when you're with somebody uh, who is uh, testing positive. In our service today, we're going to do the service of the Word in your primary book that is on page 210. Take your time. Oh, this is a beautiful few days uh, with the Lutherans, and there was about four Anglicans that were there. Uh, got to uh, meet and speak uh, with your national bishop, Bishop Susan, and lovely to have met her, and she took time to be with us. And what was so great about the few days that the sessions that she presented to us was the Lord's Prayer and how to look at the Lord's Prayer. Boy, did she open our eyes and how she would take a sentence and look at it. And I said to her, this is a sermon series coming forth because quite beautiful because sometimes um, we say the Lord's Prayer, but I don't know if we really, really think about what we're saying <coughs> when we're praying it. So it was quite beautiful, I will tell you. And she, it's a book um, with the other sacraments that she wrote with her dad. And we were all presented with this book, which was beautiful. So uh, very, very nice time to worship with them. Also, the Lutherans had um, another supplementary book, uh, Carsa, for all creation sings. Well, maybe, guess what? I went and ordered one for myself because the prayers in that um, supplement book were just beautiful. So, learned a lot in those few days, but to be able to worship with them and play with them and to have fellowship, it was good. It was really good. And of course, it was good to see Bishop Michael and of course, Adam Snook, who used to be the pastor in um, Home Bay and Mount Covered. So, just wanted you to know about the time that I had there and to be able to be with the other Lutherans and to worship. Have you caught your breath? Yeah, right. Good time. May the Lord bless you as we come together to worship, and our worship will begin on page 210, the service of the word. <clears throat> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sins, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. <coughs> Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in the newness of life, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I hereby declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our gathering in this morning is 364.
let us pray. Holy and righteous God, you are the author of life, and you adopt us to be your children. Fill us with your words of life, that we may live as witnesses to the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the proclamation of the word. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Saul continued to persecute the Lord's followers. He said they would be put to death. He went to the high priest. He asked the priest for letters to the synagogues in Damascus. He wanted to find men and women who belonged to the way of Jesus. The letters would allow him to take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. On his journey, Saul approached Damascus. Suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground. He heard a voice speak to him. Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, he replied. I am the one you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city. There you will be told what you must do. The men traveling with Saul stood there. They weren't able to speak. They had heard the sound, but they didn't see anyone. Saul got up from the ground. He opened his eyes, but he could not see. So they led him by the hand into Damascus. For three days he was blind. He didn't eat or drink anything. In Damascus, there was a believer named Ananias. The Lord, the Lord called out to him in a vision. Ananias, he said. Yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on Street Street. Ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul. He is praying. In a vision Saul has seen, a man came and placed his hands on him. That man's name is Ananias. In the vision, in, in the vision, Ananias placed his hands on Saul so he could see again. Lord, Ananias answered, I've heard many reports about this man. They say he, he has done great harm to your holy people in Jerusalem. Now he has come here to arrest all those who worship him. The chief priest has given him authority to do this. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go, I have chosen this man to work for me. He will announce my name to the Gentiles and to their kings. He will also announce my name to the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for me. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it. He placed his hands on Saul. Brother Saul, he said, you saw the Lord Jesus. He appeared to you on the road as you were coming here. He has sent me so that you will be able to see again. You will be filled with the Holy Spirit. Right away, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes, and he could see again. He got up and was baptized. After eating some food, he got his strength back. Saul spent several days with the believers in Damascus. Right away, he began to preach in the synagogues. He taught them that Jesus is the Son of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
<laughs> a psalm, psalm 30, a psalm of David, sung at the dedication of the temple. I will praise you, O Lord, for you have refreshed me. You refuse to let my enemies triumph over me. O Lord, my God, I cried out to you for help. You have restored my health and brought me up from the grave, O Lord. You kept me from falling into the pit of death. Sing to the Lord, all you godly ones. Praise his holy name. His anger lasts for the moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may go on all night, but joy comes with the morning. When I was prosperous, I said, nothing can stop me now. Your favor, O Lord, will make me, O Lord, made me as secure as a mountain. Then you turned away from me, and I shouted. I cried out to you, O Lord, I beg the I cried out to you, O Lord, I beg the Lord for mercy, saying that what will you gain if I die? If I sink down into the grave, can you thus praise from my grave? Can I tell you the words of faithfulness? Hear me, Lord, and have mercy on me. Help me, O Lord. You have turned my mourning into joyful dancing. You have taken away my clothes of mourning and clothed me with joy, that I might sing praises to you and not be silent. O Lord my God, I will give you thanks forever. The reading is from Revelations 5, verses 11 to 14. Then I looked again, and I heard the voices of thousands and millions of angels around the throne, and of the living beings, and the elders, and they sang in a mighty, in a mighty chorus, Worthy is the Lamb who was slaughtered, to receive power and riches, and wisdom and strength, and honor and glory and blessing. And then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea, and they sang, Blessing and honor and glory and power belong to the one sitting on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. And the four living beings said, Amen. And the twenty-four elders fell down and worshipped the Lamb. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> so you may sit if you so desire. Again, I've decided to take our gospel reading from the message. After this, Jesus appeared again to the disciples, this time at the Tiberias Sea, the Sea of Galilee. This is how he did it. Simon Peter, Thomas, nicknamed the twin, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the brothers Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. Simon Peter announced, I'm going fishing. The rest of them replied, We're going with you. They went out and got in the boat. They caught nothing that night, and when the sun came up, Jesus was standing on the beach, but they didn't recognize him. Jesus spoke to them, Good morning. Did you catch anything for breakfast? They answered, no. He said, throw the net off the right side of the boat and see what happens. They did what he said. 
All of a sudden, there were so many fish in it, they weren't strong enough to pull it in. Then the disciple Jesus loved said to Peter, It's the Master. When Simon Peter realized it was the Master, he threw on some clothes, for he was stripped for work, and dove into the sea. The other disciples came in by boat, for they weren't far from land, a hundred yards or so, pulling along a net full of fish. When they got out of the boat, they saw a fire laid with fish and bread cooking on it. Jesus said, Bring some of the fish you've just caught. Simon Peter joined them and pulled the net to shore, 153 big fish. And even with all those fish, the net didn't break. Jesus said, Breakfast is ready. Not one of the disciples dare ask, Who are you? They knew it was the Master. Jesus then took the bread and gave it to them. He said the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus had shown himself alive to the disciples, being raised from the dead. After breakfast, he said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Master, you know I love you. Jesus said, Feed my lambs. Then he said a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Master, you know I love you. Jesus said, Shepherd my sheep. Then he said it a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was upset that he asked for the third time, Do you love me? So he answered, Master, you know everything there is to know. You've got to know that I love you. Jesus said, Feed my sheep. I'm telling you the very truth now. When you were young, you were dressed yourself and went wherever you wish. But when you get old, you'll have to stretch out your hands while someone else dresses you and takes you where you don't want to go. He said this to him that the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God, and then he commanded, follow me. My sisters and brothers, the gospel of Christ. Praise Praise you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. <coughs> Amen. Today, we have heard the story of Peter which follows the story of Thomas. We weren't here together last week, but the second Sunday after Easter, or the first Sunday after Easter, is always known as the Low Sunday, because it's like Easter Sunday is full, and the next Sunday, boom, down goes the crowds. But we also look on that Sunday about Thomas, and we always call him Doubting Thomas. But that's a whole nother discussion when we look at him. So today we're going to look at Peter. Poor old Peter. He gets such a bit of crap, doesn't he? I mean, he is picked on. We say all kinds of things about him. But as I read a bunch of different commentaries, I saw Peter in a much different way. Because we know Peter who is rash and brash. Peter is the one whom we can count on to do things upside down and inside out. He's hot-headed. He can be impulsive. He can be thoughtless and even reckless. Our darling Peter, who becomes the head of the church. That's Peter. When we really look at him, because sometimes I'm just shook at this and Oh, Peter, you're doing that again. Because he does. He does. He was a man who wanted a full body bath at that night of the foot washing, who walked out of the garden and cutting off the ear of one of the soldiers, who gets dressed and jumps into the lake to get to know, to get near Jesus on the shore. Yes, indeed, we come to expect such behavior from Peter. And if we really look at Peter in this way, at this time, aren't we just like him? 
acting just like them, those things. We don't. We're just like them. A person who followed Jesus, even though he messed up. Well, aren't we the same way? I can resonate with Peter, because how many times have I slept? With this in mind, it's very easy to reduce the conversation between Jesus and Peter in John 21 as if Peter was looking for a reconciliation, looking because he acted so badly. And as one theologian stated, and I love this, it makes most sense to, for the moment that Jesus forgives Peter. But did you notice when we read it? Nowhere, nowhere does Jesus say, I forgive you. Interesting, isn't it? With all that he did, Jesus didn't say that. What was Jesus up to? What was Jesus trying to do? And I think what Jesus was trying to say is, Peter, recognize who you are. Recognize the story. <clears throat> who are you, Peter? Because Peter had to forgive himself. When I read the commentary, I thought, whew, you know, isn't that an interesting perspective? Because Peter seeing Jesus on the shore, don't you think he was thinking, oh dear, I kind of messed up. And here he is, and I have to face him. But Jesus didn't look at it that way, because if we look at the Synoptic Gospels, which is Matthew, Mark, and Luke, it says, do you know the man? To which Peter replied, I don't know the man. But in John, he's asked, aren't you one of the disciples? Which Peter says, I am not. Different way of looking at it, isn't it? One, do you know the man? Two, John, are you a disciple? One, Peter says, I don't know him. The other says, I am not a disciple. As a result, the conversation between Jesus and Peter should be spent taking a different meaning. Because Peter had to realize that he had to forgive himself for what he did. Jesus didn't have to forgive him. Peter had to forgive himself. And how many times does that happen to you and I? When we recognize that we have failed somewhere, that we have not answered properly, who do we have to forgive? Ourselves. Is that not hard to do when we've done something that maybe we shouldn't have done and you think, how am I going to live through this? How can I forgive myself? And yet for Jesus, he kept asking Peter to walk with him to feed the lambs, to care for the lambs, to care for the sheep. Jesus wasn't worried about this bad man that kept working out things that he shouldn't. What Jesus was more concerned about, he cared for the other. That Peter would journey with the people. Again, are we not the same way? That's what Jesus wants for you and I. That we recognize that we are his disciples that we journey with him with all the times we will slip up. How many times do you take two steps forward and you go one step back? Does that not happen to us all? Is that all through life? That's what happens. And this is where Jesus says, come follow me. Come. You have what this potential pay. Growing up, 
out how many times are we told, you got to do this, you got to do this, you got to do this, you got to do this in order to get to heaven. But the more we learn is Jesus doesn't look at this because he's he come back. You're going to falter. It's okay. It's okay. And Peter there was his master. Are you reconciled with him because it's more yourself? It's more me. It's me forgiving me because I've not stood up. It's me when I have not answered and I want to deny. But when we look at Peter, have you ever thought, put yourself at that night in the garden? And I think he was faced with, are you a disciple or do you know the man? How many of us would have said yes? Because don't you think that he was terrified? Thinking, well, if I say yes, is the same thing going to happen to me? Are they going to take me and do the same thing? And up to that point, Jesus wasn't crucified. So it's like, ooh, I thought about that passage and thought, what would have I done? Would have I been truthful? Would have I said, yes, I know this man. I am his disciple. Oh, it's hard, isn't it? It's hard to stand up for who we are. It's hard for me sometimes to say, I'm clergy, I'm a pastor. Because do you know how many people run the other way when they know that? <laughs> I've been at parties. And what do you do? Oh, I'm a pastor of the church. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we're not human beings, right? But that's what you got to think about poor Peter that night. What was going to happen to him? What was going to happen to Peter? Jesus had sheep for him to look after. Lambs to look after. He was called on that shore that day to be reminded he was a person of worth. You are a person of worth. You are a person that is loved. Jesus loves each one of us in our messed up ways and the ways that we will stumble. He still loves us. The greatest message of all, and that's what we see on the shore. Peter, I love you. Take care of my people. So like Peter, do we say, do we believe Jesus saying to us, I believe in you. I know who you are, and I love you. You are exactly the disciple I need. You are the person I need to be in the world, to walk in the world. You are my disciple. I love you. Trust those words. Believe in those words. Because Jesus is saying, I love you and I need you. Amen. Our hymn of the day is number 366.
With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated for the prayers of the people. <coughs> With the whole Church of God in Jesus Christ, let us pray for the Church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Lord, when you came down to lift us up, you became human, that we might share in the divine. You died that we might rise to life immortal. Help us to live as those called to believe, serve, and trust in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, we pray for the world, where people hunger after justice, freedom, and peace, but where people are hungry, hopeless, and destitute. In love and mercy, help us to feed and care for your lambs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of peace, we remember before you continents, countries, and places where there is violence and killing, massacre, mayhem, and gang warfare. In Darfur and Zimbabwe, Iraq, the Middle East, Sri Lanka, and Burma, parts of Europe and their country, Ukraine, Ukraine, and Russia. Under the guidance of your Holy Spirit, help all people and leaders with power and influence to put aside biases and prejudice, so we may understand diversity is part of the richness of your common humanity. Become more compassionate and cultivate the habit of caring and neighborly love and serve Lord in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, we pray for your church that we, your followers and friends, may be filled with the spirit of the living God, bursting with new life and able to feed the physical, emotional and spiritual hungry of people around you. We pray for those who are sick, the vocation to which you are calling them, that they may find in you and those around them the guidance they need. We pray for our bishops, Susan, Michael, and Sandra, and all clergy and all lay persons in their ministry. Help us to tend your sheep. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. <clears throat> Holy Spirit, within our local communities, we pray for neighbors, friends, and families, those ill in body and mind, anxious or afraid, depressed and despairing, those lonely, abused and grieving. Especially remembering today Allison, Jackie, little Louie, Mary, Johnny, Mom, and all others you carry within your heart at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask for your blessing for those giving pastoral care and love, that all may be strengthened in spirit, healed in their minds and hearts, and feel your comfort and love surrounding them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for those who have died and are now enfolded in the love and peace of your kingdom. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, a light no darkness can quench. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Christ is the King of glory. Open our hearts to receive him in love. And with joy, merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.
our offering prayer at this time. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and gracious hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. And our offering again is 376. Mm -hmm.
God of all grace, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Before we have our close sending him, is there any special announcements? We were supposed to have a worship <clears throat> committee after church, but I think we better delay it because I'm not sure if this would walk me around this. Um, but we still have. <laughs> <laughs> you could take that two ways, couldn't you? Yeah. You said people run the other way when you're a pastor. What, right there? You said people run the other way when you say you're a pastor. <laughs> exactly. Because the one that I want to plan, of course, is our Pentecost Sunday, but we still have time if we met in two weeks. Is that all right with the committee? Are you comfortable with that? It's just I don't want to be blamed for passing on anything, and I'm still going to be uh, quite cautious, okay? Um, I'm just trying to think. As you know, uh, Pastor um, David is now uh, retired fully, and I think there's a gentleman who has three churches already, and the Lutheran is going to go with the Lutheran New Germany Parish two Sundays a month, is my understanding. Now, I could have that mixed up, but I think he's taking it on now. For how long, I don't know. That's it. That's the gentleman. I got to meet him, and he's going to come. I don't know how he's doing it, but God love him. Uh, I will say that I was asked, and I said, no. <laughs> I'm quite happy to be here. That's all I want. So it's like, if they want to come here, fine. I'm not going there. <laughs> <laughs> For once, I can know how to say no. You know how to have to learn that word? Uh, so I said, listen, I'm retired, but they respected that, okay, when I said no. And I'm very contented here for however long we can last, and I have my health. So that was another thing that had come up, okay. Um, there is a concert tonight at St. Paul's, um, I forget, uh, Emmanuel Song um, is singing or whatever, at 7 o'clock, okay? So that's on tonight. So I think that's it. And that, again, thank you for coming out. I do appreciate it, believe it or not, uh, considering, but we're getting past this slowly, and if we just keep our, um, the rules, I had to go on the internet and find out what I had to do, and so I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. And the thing that surprised me, Bishop Sander did not have to tell us that she tested positive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you go on the internet, you don't have to tell somebody. So I was extremely appreciative that she did that so that I can be cautious with you. So it made all the difference in the world. So God bless you in the next couple weeks as you go out forth and it's getting a little bit warmer. So may the Lord bless you. Our sending hymn is 361.
welcome to our friends of Danelle and Jim. I forgot to welcome you at the first of the service, and thank you for coming. It's a pleasure to have you back. And of course, Sadie, it's so nice to see you back there. It's a real joy to have you as well. Well, thank you for coming, and bless us are going home. Go forth into the world to seek, serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah! Hallelujah.